Welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today we're going to be doing something I've never done before. It's my first time doing that, and that's setting up a security light. I'll be hooking everything up, setting up a new breaker, doing all the wiring, and I'll be showing you guys kind of the process of how I'm doing that. Shout out to Sansi for giving me these lights. So the whole reason that I'm actually making these is so that I can keep away the raccoons and the possums and the skunks because typically I'll have them come out here and they'll dig up holes in the middle of the night. They're looking for grubs to eat. They, you know, will mess up salad mix, they'll mess up germination. And I heard online that a really good way to get rid of them is just have an automatic security light that will scare them away. One other solution I heard that was excellent was a, it's a motion activated water gun so that it like finds them and squirts at them. Um, anyway, so it's, you know, it's kind of a way to, to deal with them without having to trap them or kill them or things like that. And just so you guys know, I am definitely not an electrician. This is my first time doing something this advanced with house, you know, 120 volt alternating current. It really wasn't that difficult because I've had a lot of other experience with other electrical systems, mostly 12 volt. I think I'm doing everything the code but do not copy what I'm doing. Do your, either hire an electrician, do your own research, please. And um, always, of course, turn off the electricity, turn off the fuse at the breakers, and be very careful with alternating current. This type of voltage can kill you. Having said that, I'll show you guys how I set it up very simply, but this is definitely not a how to uh, set up your own breaker and wiring and stuff. So the first thing that I did yesterday was install a new 15 amp breaker. You know, I just went to Home Depot and I got all these parts. For around 50 bucks, I got all of the wiring, the switches, the breakers, and all of that. And I wanted another breaker is to have it completely separate from my landlord's 20 amp here. And the 20 amp powers all the lights in here, you know, all the outlets to the fridges and all of that stuff. Uh, it also goes to these switches. Now I took apart the wiring and as I said, I am pretty much a novice at doing electrical. So I didn't want to screw with this. I just wanted to start from scratch and, you know, build a system that I could do based upon what I learned on YouTube and reading online and my other experience. This is my new circuit. So the lights in my switch all run off this 15 amp. And for 15 amp, you use 14 gauge wire. For a 20 amp, you use 12 gauge. So basically you, you, what you happens is you connect to these terminals. So this fuse box has three terminals where you can have different circuits. And on this circuit, there's the black line. So in a house, so this is for America, you guys. Every country has their own electrical codes and national standards that they go by. So please refer to your home country standards. In America, 120 volt, uh, ours, the black, is the hot wire where, that, where the electricity is running through. So that's running off of this, and it's going up into a wire here. Okay, this wire is called, it's called a Romex, and it's a 14 gauge type 2 Romex. That's for housing electrical. And then, so this Romex has three different types of wire in it. It has a ground, it has a hot, and it has a neutral. I'm not going to explain exactly what those mean, uh, but essentially what you do is you hook them all up. So the black is connected, right? The ground is connected over here. This is where you can connect your different ground connections. This is where you connect your neutral connections. Uh, this is the, the main neutral hot that's running to the other fuse box for the main part of the house. So this is where it's bringing in the power here. So I'm running all those three wires to this switch. The, the three wires go up this cable. And I decided to just keep the wiring all inside of here, so just keep it out of my landlord's way. So you can buy these boxes and these external faces from Home Depot. The wiring goes into this box, and then this is the switch inside. Wire them together, and then the line continues on. So now this, this line right here has power, and it also can be controlled by this switch. If I click on and off, the power will be either cut at this box or will be allowed to go through. 
So what I'll do is run the wire along the inside of the garage. And I'm gonna put one light right here and one light on this corner here. So I need to bring the electrical wire through the roof right here. This is gonna be a really safe spot. It's also the spot that I want the light to go so that it'll be able to shine in a really good area. The sensor will have a good position and the screws fit in. So it looks like right about there. Just line this up. And then this will go inside of this like so. And the wire comes in here and then you get a totally weatherproof, waterproof uh, fit here so that everything's safe. Got a wire through and attach that the electrical to it. Now I just gotta feed it through. So to make this thing watertight, I need to use some caulking. And I just got some leftover stuff. You know, make sure it will work with metal. So the top is gonna have the PVC plugged in there. The rest will be capped with these little caps. So what I'm doing, I'm just putting a small bead in the threading and that's just going to help it have a really watertight seal and I'm going to do that to all the rest of them as well. Let's take a paper towel and clean it all up. This is called a voltmeter or a multimeter and allows you to test resistance, direct current and alternating current amperage and some other things. For what I'm doing, I need to be set to the alternating current voltage. Let me just show you guys a cool trick. So you may not have known, and I didn't know until I started working on this project, this side is a little bit bigger than this one. And that's to tell you what's what. So this is the ground, this is the hot side, and this is the ground for the plug housing, I believe, something like that. It's another type of ground. What you can do to test to make sure that it is in fact off with this thing hooked up correctly. So you'll want your red plug, your power to be in the volts and then the black will be in the comm. And then you can shove these in to test the voltage. The black is the ground that's gonna go on the left side, which is the bigger notch. And we are reading zero. So let me go turn on the fuse box and then we should be reading 120 volts with it on. Okay, so now with the power on, I am reading 116, basically 120. So right now the power is on. Now if I turn the fuse back off, now we're back to zero. And I know that in fact, there's no power to that switch. Okay, so in the Sansi light box, we've got an instruction manual, the lights, wiring and the mounting bracket and that's it. So now my next step is to wire up the light with the housing and because I'm using two lights I'm gonna have to wire this slightly differently than I would if it was just one light. It's gonna mount together so that'll be sealed. Then the wires are gonna come in and out of this. So my next step here is I just want to figure out uh, how much to cut this pipe and I'm gonna take my PVC cutters here and cut a little bit off. Now because I'm using two lights, I'm gonna have to run the wire in and then back out to the next light. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start wiring this together. First I'll put some caulking on the threading and thread that in. And then the next thing I need to do is put some PVC glue and glue this together. So this glue is gonna hold the pipe together and then also keep it watertight. So the Sansi light kit comes with the mounting bracket. So it has your little wire screws. This plugs into the mount up that I just screwed into the garage there. Then you connect it all together. But before that I do that, I need to wire this up. So the first thing I'll do is, use the, is connect these grounds. And then I'm gonna connect it to the screw in there. So I'm twisting the two wires together, effectively making them one wire. So then I'm gonna take those and then curl them around. Okay, and that's what that looks like. There's the green screw I was talking about, and then the grounds are all wired to that. So the next step now is pigtail them. I think pigtailing is the best way, because if there's a short out in the light, then the, the second light still receives power. So I think that's why people do it. 
So to make a pigtail, we're gonna need some copper wire, and we're not gonna need too much. So I'm just gonna grab a couple pieces for this. And then I'm gonna take that ground wire out of there. Okay, so now we got two copper wires. So now we're gonna wire this in. So we're gonna combine all, all three of these together. So the two blacks and then the pigtail together. Okay, so I just attached a little wire connector on here so that I can ground this. There's a little grounding spot on this bracket. I could have combined it all to that center green screw, I think, but I just didn't wanna to have to deal with it. Show you guys what it looks like. Now on the final light, there's no pigtailing required. These are the terminal connections. So you know, I've got my ground here. The main ground is grounded to here. The light's grounded to here. And then I've got my light and my neutral connected. So now the circuit's complete. I'm just gonna close it up and then I'm done. Okay guys, here's the moment of truth. So we're gonna flip my breaker on. Now, I need to flip this switch on. Once this switch goes, the power will go to the lights and it should work. Let's see. And it looks like we got light. All right. Woohoo. Cool, and then they went off by themselves. All right, so now as far as the controls go for the lights, you can move them up and down. And then this also rotates as well. So that's what allows you to get the correct position. Underneath the sensor here, they give you a couple options. You can set it for one minute, five minute, or 10 minutes, and you can adjust the range. So I'm setting it up for one minute, maximum range. We'll see how that works. And we'll set out a, a camera overnight and see if we can catch anything. I'm sure that we'll set the light off on some cats without a doubt. Um, and then we'll see what happens. Here's what it looks like at night with the lights on and almost everything's really lit up. Here's what it looks like on the house. So that's pretty cool. I'll actually be able to work out here at night when I'm cleaning up. These lights will come on automatically and I can finish up whatever I need to out here. I'm very happy with these Sansi lights and I really like that they're LED and they use low energy because these are pretty darn bright. So I've been trying for about a week to catch the animals on camera at night, but um, it's been pretty difficult. I'm just using my GoPro to do it, and the GoPro doesn't work super well at night, uh, but I just wanna show you guys the evidence that the light, I believe that the light really is working and it's keeping the skunks and possums away. So check this out. For about the last week or so, the only place that they have dug is right here in these outer beds. I typically dig through my compost pile. That's pretty normal. My wife actually came out here the other night and she noticed that the light was on and then she saw a skunk run and run into the neighbor's yard. Um, so that was another confirmation that it looks like the light is scaring them away. And for me, the final confirmation is just that they basically not dug at all out in the main market plot and they used to do it all the time. So here I've got a freshly sprouting lettuce bed. Normally they'd come through and there'd be about five different holes through here. They didn't film it but there was at one point there was one small hole and then that was it which is pretty rare. Usually there's not just one it's more than one. So that really tells me I think that the lights are working well and that the sensors are set up in the right zones and it is scaring away skunks and possums for sure. The raccoons I'm not as sure. Mostly on the camera, I'm catching cats because the cats are constantly going through here as I knew they were, and that's the main reason I don't have rodents or gophers on this property. So 
So I come out the next morning and there's definitely been some skunk action. This is exactly what it looks like when they dig. They dig these kind of skinnier holes. They went over here, they dug up there. There's a hole there, there's a hole there. And then here's the area that I showed you yesterday that they really like. Some new ones there. And they really dug in to the side right here. Just remade the compost piles. They went into it a little bit. So these are the types of holes that they would put into the garden beds. So I'm sure many of you have experienced this really big annoyance. On this other side here, a few more holes, but it's pretty cool. You know, the beds are completely fine. And typically, they really love these fresh greens beds. And if you look out here, there's nothing that has holes. This whole area, because the sensors for the Sansi lights are all set up uh, to be in this main plot area. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed with the sensors on the Sansis. It seems like the spread is really good because multiple nights, you know, there's evidence of skunks coming into this yard. Typically they would dig out here in addition to all these places out here. So I'm pretty sure that these lights are scaring them away. So I'm very happy with the results. All right guys, that's it for today's episode about scaring away skunks and possums with security lights. And it's been about two weeks since I've installed them and ever since I've been using them, I have not had any holes out in the garden. So it's been a great success for me. If you'd like to get some Sansi security lights like I have, they've given me a 20% discount code for any of their 30 watt equivalent LED lights. So I'll put a link down in the description for those and I'll give you the code, it is we and you and that'll give you 20% off. So it was very generous of them. Thank you to Sansi uh, for giving me a great product to use. All right, everybody. Hope you have a wonderful day out in your garden or your farm. Good luck protecting everything from different animals and bugs. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.